Well, you take years ago, I knew every person pretty near on the street. Over a period of number of years, they either moved away or deceased. And the gang that we used to hang around with, of course, they got off and married. Some of them went to the war, never returned. As the population ages, a growing number of old people find themselves alone. While many are coping well at home, others are frail and need support. They may want to care for themselves, but their minds and bodies have begun to fail them. Then there are seniors capable of caring for themselves who choose not to, the victims of their own neglect. For old people who either can't or won't take care of themselves, too often institutions are the quick solution. This is where I was born, in the front room. On a Sunday morning, on April the 24th, and I'm 65 years of age today. The house means to me the same as when I was born. It's something I light up to. Jack Huggins was an only child. For the past 20 years, he's lived alone. In every neighborhood, there are men and women like Jack, eccentrics and recluses whose private way of life may get them into trouble with public authorities. I've lived here all my life, and uh, I never did get married. There was times that I had had girlfriends and everything, but I'd had trouble with these girls taking care of my parents. And I just didn't want to get married. Because I had my own private life the way I lived. I was told by my parents I could live my own life as long as I didn't get into trouble. In his younger days, Jack Huggins kept out of trouble. And the work he did on the house was a source of pride. Now he spends all his time caring for his cats and tinkering with his hobbies. Since the death of his parents, Jack has let things slide. When my dad was living, I educated myself to do certain jobs. I do electrical work, I do plumbing work, automobile work, television and radio, and different types of hobbies. Stitch. Where are you, Stitch? I, I saw Prince Charles shortly after that. He was horrified, and the Queen behaved so well. I mean, Prince Philip and they stay, they live in the same apartment. Man. And that, that morning Thank was very ironic because Let Prince Philip was to go and exercise his horses. And Prince Charles would go down to her. You know, her dining room was this sort of part of the home or her sitting room. Did you have any indication from the Queen that she was anxious for Prince Charles to get married? No, no. not whatsoever. This, this was a media thing again. During the course of the move, somebody decided to walk away with about 40... I don't think either one of us really expected Jack to be what Jack is. Certainly if we did, it probably would have affected our decision to buy this particular house. 13 months later, I don't think we really regret it. Jack's a good neighbor. You know, he's relatively quiet. He only carries on at 3 o'clock in the morning a couple of times a week. <laughs> Yells and screams at the cats. At his kids, as he calls them. <laughs> I don't know what the heck's going on. Put my head up against it. <laughs> Might and put some brains into it. Uh, I don't think so, Jack. Don't put the nail right through because, I mean, to say, I don't want to be standing here for a few days. <laughs> well, we bought the house February 7th. I mean, there's snow on the ground. You couldn't see anything. We love the house. In my mind, it was a distress sale because it was so low priced. And then it warmed up, the rain started coming, and it was incredible. The rancid smell comes through every once in a while. That's the worst. And then we started hearing stories from the neighbors. Oh, so you're the people who bought the house next to the cat man. The cat man? Come on. 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 Come on.
hang on to your buttons. Waiting for it to eat. Hey, waiting for it to eat. You want something? Come on. Want something? Want something? Get your tongue rattling in there. Taste it. Don't waste it. Hurry up, please. I live for those animals. If I had my parents, I would feel the same way. But I no longer can help them. Oh, my God. I have my pets, and when I lose them, it hurts me. I said, baby. And when I go out and I see other animals, but I want to bring them home as a family. And then I, I get heck from the departments. You've got too many cats. What's wrong with you? With no hot running water, Jack found it hard to keep himself or the house clean. A neglected cat bite turned gangrenous and his left thumb had to be amputated. If I had to gone to the doctor sooner, this wouldn't have happened. And my legs went out. I'd had trouble with my ulcers on my legs. It was my diabetic that was causing my trouble. You see, the way my legs they, they get uh, raw, and uh, if I don't keep them, like, covered, the maggots, the flies got on them, they're moist flesh, and they go for moisture, the flies. And there was a hole about the size of a half a dollar. When I did go down to the doctors, my legs had swelled up to the point, as the doctor said to me, he says, what in the H, he says, are you uh, going on up there? He says, those legs, he says, are just uh, the point of no return. Concern for Jack's health and their own well-being had prompted Jack's neighbors to call in the health department. We moved into the house, and summer came along, and the stench was absolutely ferocious. Roxanne and I discussed it. Not at very much length, but enough to say, well, we're not going to tolerate this because we're concerned about bugs, rats. So I got in contact with the health department. And, I mean, what in God's name is going on next door that it smells this badly? There was a kind of mess here in the house. I will admit there was a bit of a mess. But city health department kept tormenting me. And I get a letter one day, much as I say, that uh, they're going to put me out of my house if I didn't cooperate. The city health department won't come down without a paper and the police. And I was told in the kitchen by one of the inspectors, you keep your mouth shut. I was deliberately dragged down the steps on my seat like a garbage bag and they put handcuffs on me. They took me up to the hospital and they started giving me these here lithium and some other tablets. And because I wouldn't take them, they pushed me on the floor and pumped needles into me. This is when all the trouble started. You wanna help me? When he was removed to the hospital, I thought that there would be a decent cleanup so that he could come in and live. But when he came back, he had a bare mattress, no sheets, no pillows, no blankets, nothing. And they stuck him in there. Here, and they, they, here's they your threw house. him back in the house. And so if you give anybody a hard time, any back official, in. any government person, any health person, if you just tell them no once, we're going to rip you out of the house and throw you into some institution yep. for the rest and of your throw natural away the life. Key. Here's a guy that, that walks down the street and, and pollocks stuff out of people's garbage. <laughs> I mean, this guy, according to various levels of the city, is not capable of, of managing his own affairs. That remembers exactly when he got it and from which house he got it. The lawnmower that I borrow off him from time to time, <laughs> well, he remembers where he got it. Now, I don't even remember. He's told me several times where he got that from. But he got that out of somebody's garbage. And he remembers which house it was, and he fixed it up.
Jack is eccentric. He's a pack rat. He may exaggerate the value of his belongings. But I can tell you I was in the house before the clean-out, and Jack had his mother's dining room set. It had junk all over it, but it was all there. I came back in after the clean-out, and there was a china cabinet, and everything else was gone. And if he's angry, he has a right to be angry. And if he's distrustful of the city authorities, he has a right to be distrustful. The reclusive elderly are often distrustful of outside intervention. They jealously guard their independence. Jack Huggins met the initial approach of the health department with hostility. He ignored their work orders. Yet Jack's house was a health and fire hazard. The department had a legal right to go in and clean it up. I get depressed with the whole thing. It actually haunts me even when I go to bed. I go to bed at night and try to get a proper nice rest, and it just, uh, I can't cry. Jack's troubles didn't end with the cleanup. Doctors had used the Mental Health Act to keep him in hospital against his will. They also certified him financially incompetent. When Jack was sent home months later, his estate remained with the public trustee. For much of his life, Jack had worked in the warehouse of a drug company, paid his bills, and saved for his retirement. When the trustee took over Jack's financial affairs, almost a quarter of these savings were used to pay for the cleanup. A community-based agency called Senior Link was given the job of delivering Jack's meager allowance. Door, hand. They, uh, no, how you doing? What, we got checks again? Hey. Love notes from the... Trustee. I got a couple of things I want to tell you, okay? Yeah. Um, okay, the one, you know about the trusteeship, okay? Yeah. I'm not signing then, no papers. I refuse to sign papers until I get well, everything back. I got back. something else for you, just to look at, okay? This is for the photos. Do you want to get those photos? Well, you can compare these these with that. You know the photos I'm talking yeah, about. I know, they took, I know. They, yeah. they insulted me about that. They said that your house was left in an awful state. Right. These are before and after photos. Now, this is just something that you authorize us to get the photos from the health department. There's nothing else on there. because no, read I mean, it. Read it. Yeah. I got my glasses inside here, but can you read it? Do you want oh, yeah, me to read it to read you? It. No, no, I can read it. The reason they have to go through us is because of this trustee thing. Not Lover boy. Okay, are you all right about that? Well, yeah. I'll, uh, so you just sign there. Sign Jack Huggins. Yeah. I just want to get my Jack the right way. As far as April 30th goes, you know that's the deadline for all well, that work to be done. I've tried to get a person. You realize that, right? I know. I know all about yeah. it. This city health department deliberately robbed me. And, and what is human rights in this country? You get 65 years of age, what, are you still an ornament on the wall? Good heavens, that this country, it seems to me that, that other things could go on in this country. It's going to start getting to, worked uh, out now. But i got to go, all right? My pets, you see, with my pets and everything, they're down on them. And they're down on me. Well, they, they can't do any, nothing about the animals now. There's no harm coming to the animals. They seem happy. They seem healthy. So don't worry about them, OK? And I'm going to see, I'm going to call you again, OK? Yeah, you do Before that. Before because... the 30th. Yeah, and because I'm going to see, we've got to do something, work something out of this business, because I'm willing to go along with a certain point of it. Mm -hmm. But to come in here and be rifled You're, on, you're not going to be rifled this time, because there's going to be people watching them this time, and things are going to be done well. I'll, you can I'll talk me. to you next week. Eh? Yeah, and take care of yourself. Bye. Okay, see ya. As far as being incompetent, this diabetic is what's causing my trouble. And if I don't have food, it causes my nerves to get out of commission. The trustee grabbed my uh, $10,000 bank account and supposed to be paying bills. Now they give me a $75 out of my account. 
I'd like to buy some things for myself and have a little bit of freedom. After all, I, I didn't uh, steal the money off anybody. I worked darn hard for it. I paid $2,400 to have this house cleaned, and they cleaned me out of everything, even my clothes. In other words, I could walk around in my bare skin, as far as they were concerned. And I had intentions of doing it, only for getting arrested on the street. What I couldn't understand, they took toilet paper, soap, and uh, paper towels. There must have been a lot of dirty people. And they much as have told me that the house was a fire hazard. But the question is, I asked them, if it was a fire hazard, how come you're taking jewelry? Does that burn? My mother's picture, that was in a metal case. My father's picture. This is what actually tormented me more. My mother died in, uh, in 1951, she passed away. And I promised my mother that I'd look after my father until such times as he passed away. My father passed away on December the 16th of, of 1965. And uh, I buried him on the 20th. I buried my father, I put my hand up on a casket. And as I took care of you and mother, now I have to fight my own battles. I said, I'm a man now. It's 21 years this year since father's gone. Looking after his parents and saving $10,000, Jack Huggins had seemed financially competent. Senior Link thought so. When the trustee moved to extend control over Jack's affairs, the agency brought in a psychiatrist for a second opinion. Mr. Huggins, what's your understanding of why I was asked to see you? Well, they checked me out of, of the trustee. So what we need to know is your understanding of your financial affairs Okay, that's what's important for me. I need to know that information and that that's your decision and that it's not being interfered with in any way by um, uh, some form of mental illness or because your intellectual functioning is impaired. You understand what I mean? Oh, I, don't, I understand it. Okay. But what I mentioned to you before you go any further, I want to explain something. Okay. That, that the, uh, the whole situation, what gets me so mad, I never owed anybody a cent. I never had a credit card in my life. I never had a, any credit cards. I never owed a cent. Um, what would your estimate be of, say, do you have a telephone? Oh, I have a telephone. Okay. How much a month? I don't know what it is around, I imagine it's about $15 a month now. What, what were you paying when you were last well, paying? Uh, I was about 1486 I think, or 1489 somewhere in about that point. OK. How about, Maybe your, up a few how about your taxes on the house? What taxes? You? Uh, when I last stopped paying them, there were approximately eight hundred and uh, forty dollars, and I managed to a, pay a it a year. Yeah, a year. I managed to pay it and keep out of debt. All right. What other regular expenses did you have? Well, I used to have. A, I had a car, and uh, of course, I didn't try to use it too much, only for shopping, mm -hmm. and uh, I had my hobbies. My, being what? <laughs> well, other than the cats. And now, God bless you. <laughs> no, my television. Uh -huh. I had bought. I tell you the truth. I can't pass a radio store. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, it's like a germ with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I used to pick televisions up on the street, and I wouldn't. Have, I could have paid my own way. As I've said before, Doctor, I never owed a person a cent mm -hmm. until these people took over. And now. I'm getting treated as if I'm uh, Mr. Nobody. 
just Mr. Nobody out on the street. In his report, the psychiatrist described Jack as a very eccentric individual, but one fully competent to manage his own financial affairs. He was less convinced of Jack's ability to care for himself in general. Jack was afraid of being institutionalized again. With support from his community, he set out to prove that he was capable of living at home. I have neighbors that get my food, and Senior Link has been looking after me. I sometimes eat out of the pot that I cook it in, and then wash it afterwards, because one hand saves the other. But I still get enough to eat. Earlier, Jack had rejected home support services like Meals on Wheels. I got some tomatoes when I was out up in Danforth. Now he welcomed the daily visits of the St. Elizabeth nurses to dress his legs, monitor his diabetes, oh, yeah, and well, watch his diet. Yeah, you know, it's a bucket scoop. This is very swollen to do, Jack. Last night they were bothering me. I went to bed, and then I, I left the clean on the floor there this morning. Look at this. Yeah, it's clean now. Well, we're getting there. Slow but sure. If you help me. I know, Darren, what you're doing a good we'll job. We'll get the result, right? Yeah. Well, I've been trying to stay off these things, but I don't know. I woke up in the middle of the night, and boy, I'll tell you. It's... Well, I think over the weekend you've been walking a little too much. Yeah, I know, well, if you're doing a good job, so that's why I don't, uh, the they're a heck of a lot better than they were six months ago. Makes a good job there, I know that. Makes a good job of things. And that's it. But you have to do your good job too, Jack. You know, you must eat protein and avoid feet. the sugar. And I think you stand too long on your feet. Yeah, okay, you yeah. You be very careful of your... Oh, okay. Uh, Until tomorrow, you there, stay... I can't, uh... Stay off your legs as much as possible. Yeah. I do walk. It, it, it gets it out of my system. And I get the dickens for being on my feet too much. Don't be afraid. The health department was after Jack Come to here. keep the house clean and Come install here. a water heater. Jack decided to do battle. Come here. The director of the Advocacy Center for the Elderly was called in. Jack told her that he was not going to obey the work order till all his possessions were returned. I can't just go ahead and sue somebody. You know, I am going to act as your lawyer, but that's why I need you to get to sign a retainer authorizing me to act for you, and also another consent to the public health department, because besides the pictures, I want them to release to talk to me about your file and all the things that happened in the past, okay? Well, I know that. I can give you a list of what happened in the past. Well, I know, but I want, I want their file, because yeah. I've got your information, yeah. but I want to know what they're saying, because they may have a different story, and that's why we got to see what their side of the story is, okay? But, uh, so that's the first thing. It's, it's just giving me authority to act for you. So you can see I've talked about getting control, that from the public trustee. Well, where would you get, want to get in the driver's seat and... and uh... I'm not in the driver's seat. No, you're I mean, in the you driver's get... seat and no, you're going to give me I want you to give you instructions to be in the driver's seat to assist me. That's right, now, I'm In other assisting. words, you've got a steering wheel as well as I have. Let's put it that way. It's a two-wheel drive. <laughs> sort of. Not exactly a sort well, of. Well, in that way, you understand what I mean. That's an instructor. Yeah, <laughs> you're instructing me. Yeah. Okay, just before I go, I'd like to go around the house That's a bit cool. and see what needs cleaning up. Sure. So this is the kitchen anyway, that's the refrigerator. Does this one work? No, that's the one they, as I say, I opened. Just a minute, I'll show you the way they left it. I, actually, it's okay, you don't really have to open it up. See the way they, isn't that a that's, fine? Yeah, that's okay. That was guys. supposed to be clean. That was supposed to be clean. And they talk about me cleaning things. That's supposed to be clean. And then this is the thing I had to spend $150 for. Mm -hmm. For what? That's the question I've asked. 
Well, why don't you why don't you show me the basement? Yeah, I'm just down here. So I'm gonna do, just check to see if there's any. I don't think there's any other cats no. around. See the way they broke these doors? There's pieces of that door. Okay, well, why don't you show me what it looks like downstairs so I get an they, idea? They, it's, uh, in, it's in the work order. They want the basement cleaned up. See, they, there's wood down here for to do work. That's the biggest. You know, a lot of stuff here to be running up and down the stairs. Well, yeah, well, this is wood for the repair. I picked that up at work. A lot of this stuff here can be used. There's wood over there for the repairs. Yeah, but you might want to put it in some other spot so that you don't trip on it if you go down, no. up and down the stairs. See, I was going to put an extension out the back. That's why I yeah. got that. You know, this is in the work order. They, yeah. they said that the, the, the basement had to be cleaned up. Yeah. you got to realize, you've got a furnace right there and all this wood here, it's a yeah. fire hazard. I'm going to use this wood to save me buying. In the cleanup, you might yeah. want to sort it out yeah. so there's not so much stuff oh. right near the furnace. And some of the stuff that is junk, then you can pitch That's it out. That's right. Well, there's stuff like bottles and stuff. The only reason I had them, I used to use that water thing on the furnace. Yeah, but you, done know, away you, don't, with that. you don't need the bottles and, and no. the old cans. But I had that. Okay, I've got a good idea what's down here, Jack. I think I'm gonna go up because I got I gotta get going now. That's a real problem. You don't have any old friends down here, do you? An active friend, you never know. <laughs> you made two piles. <laughs> yeah. Time you get through this job, you'll have piles too. <laughs> Gosh. So we didn't really make a good pile and a bad pile. Careful of that steps, Jack. That's all right. No, I got no feeling in that. You need some kind of railing on that. So we just made this a wood pile wood. and a metal pile. That's yeah, that's all metal. That's, that's all right. You may have used this aluminum for something. Sell it. Yeah, you should be able to sell that. OK, I'm going to get some more stuff, Jack. Well, take your time now. For God's sake, don't kill yourselves. Senior Link cleared a space for the gas company to install a water heater. Six weeks later, Jack was still waiting. Months had passed since the report on his competence was sent to the trustee, and still no response. In frustration, Jack decided to make his own case to the trustee. Say, I, uh, Mr. Huggins of Waverly Road calling. Uh, Mr. Bradley has my, uh... Uh, business there tied up in my office and near your office down there. I'd like to know when I'm going to get my freedom off him. The simple reason that he's been holding this uh, trusteeship over me, and I have a letter, and the letter has been sent in to him. That letter was given to me by a psychiatrist, and I do believe it should carry a weight. So you can just tell Mr. Bradley that, eh? So I appreciate it. I'm sorry to be nasty with you on the phone like that, but it gets a little bit unbearable. Surely. Well, thank you kindly. Right. All right. Bye. The photographs that finally arrived from the health department were not designed to advance Jack's case. Few things of value were visible among the piles of bags and boxes. Proving his losses would not be easy. These are the ones that they sent to me before and after. That wasn't piled that way. They've piled it all in there themselves that way. I deny any way of that being that way. I still say it's the wrong, it's the wrong way. If they hid those clothes down below, mm -hmm. not to hurt your feelings in any way. And they've got the bathroom there. Mm -hmm. I know the bathroom floor was bad because I started to clean that. This it? This kitchen, well, I know that kitchen was bad. Well, I had it all mm -hmm. bagged up, ready to go. Some of it was ready to go. Ready to jumble, that. eh? The place does look an awful lot cleaner in the after version. I don't want to hurt the health department for doing what they did. Explanation is what I want, and not be dominated. The department now made some changes. The old health inspector was moved to another neighborhood, and a new man appointed who seemed more sympathetic. Well, the new health inspector has a different way of speaking to a person. He comes down and jokes, and I think he knows that I do have a problem. 
what about the, the garbage Earth. stuff? It's starting to collect a little bit. This isn't garbage. No, with all that paper and stuff over there. Oh, that well, I'm going to throw that. I could, that the only reason I put that there is for to put garbage in. I keep those bags for putting that stuff in. Yeah. Here's so, a couple. I got this stuff here. I started to sweep the floor here this morning. Have you See what happened? Yeah, they okay. have, have you got any insecticide or anything? Do you have any? Snatch of the raid or anything for the way? I had two cans of raid. Yeah. And they threw it out on me. Okay. I, I, I don't know what, what you're doing. We're in the hell. Excuse me, I had glass cleaner, Windex for cleaning windows, gallons of the stuff. And uh, th that's what okay. Roxanne's mad next door. She says, cut out saying damn in hell, will you please? Because <laughs> she says your our walls are getting hot. Okay. Excuse See what me, you listen. can get and do something about this, okay? Yeah, I, I know what to clean up because you're going to get behind yourself again. City figures I'm an old man, and they run into these cases all the time. What the hell with the old man? I've got one one word for them, Harrison. I'm 65, and as long as God gives me enough breath, right to your face, not to hurt your feelings, I can stare you right out on it and be honest with you, and you can take it for what it's worth. I will fight until they put me in Pine Hill Cemetery, and I've told them to bury me, bury me the next day. We're not you want to fight? We're no, but I, I, no, I, I'm, I want to know why I get such a dirty end of the stick every time I ask questions. I don't mean with you. Mm -hmm. And then the thing is, I have been deprived of my mother's pictures. My father I had pictures of my father on the fire reels, and they, they were way back to 50, 60 years ago. And they took all that stuff. I go up in bed, and I lay on the bed and cry. Yeah. Okay. It breaks I, me. I That's why I swear. I understand. That's why I swear. And I get out of hand with you. Okay, okay. These things okay. hurt me so I much understand. down in this I gut. Know. I know. Did you lose your baby? Hey? We lost ink too, didn't we? Damn shame. Your other little daughter. If I didn't have my animals, to tell you the honest to God truth, it just makes me wonder what would come out of it. I've had to be doctor and undertaker here. Between kittens and the other, I would say there's close to 75 cats to bury in the back over a period of time. I brought many of them into the world and I've lost them. And that hurts mighty bad. It breaks my heart. I, I take it and blast it my own way, bury it. I can't help it. I miss them. Really. They're my family. And I love them. But God takes them. And I can't explain it. It torments me. Why can't they take the people that do the harm? I mean it. All he asks for is a little bit of food, care, and love. It's been a year since Jack agreed to tell his story. He may never get compensation from the health department, and his assets are being held by the trustee until a dispute over Jack's account is settled. Yet, at least by making his grievances known, he's gained some ground. For the time being, he's won the right to stay home. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. 